What engine and drivetrain parts do you need for your swap? Let's check it out. Welcome to part two of our six part E30 M5X swap guide. If you haven't seen the first video, click the link right here. In this video, we'll be covering what engine and transmission options you have and what flywheel, clutch, drive shaft, differential, and starter you should match to that choice, as well as what engine mounts you'll need for the swap. First off, let's start with your engine. You're going to want to choose the largest capacity engine you can to make the most power and just make the whole swap worth it. Ideally, it would be really awesome if you could find an S50 or S52, although they are quite expensive and hard to come by. So more realistically, we're going to be looking at M50 or M52. My largest concern with M52 is the amount of coating you'll need to remove the EWS immobilizer and all of the emissions related programs with that engine. Whereas with the M50, it's pre-emissions, so it's mostly just bolt in and get the engine started. My recommendation for an engine is an M50 B25TU. It's the M50, so it's pre-emissions, a lot easier to bolt in. It's the 2.5 liter, which is the largest displacement for that generation. And it's the TU, which means technical update. And this means it's gonna come with a double Vano system, which just adds a little bit more power to it. No matter what engine you choose, you're gonna need the oil pan, windage trays, oil pump pickup, and the dipstick tube from a E34 between the years of 1991 and 1995. Now, because these oil pans are so necessary for the swap, they're usually hard to find and quite expensive. First off, I would check locally at uh, any parts yards, Kijiji, Craigslist, something like that. In my case, I found a parts yard in the States that was able to pick up all the parts I needed and ship them to the border for me for about $200 Canadian. Now, another thing I should add, make sure to also get a skid plate. You just spent a bunch of money on this really expensive oil pan, make sure to protect it. When you're mounting the engine in the car, you're going to need E36 six-cylinder engine arms, as well as rubber mounts from an E28 M5. Now, it's really confusing with these mounts because there's a left and right side that are two different part numbers, and the right side is much more expensive than the left side. You can just use two of the left side, part number is right here and in the description. Now that we've picked an engine, we need a transmission. Your options are one from an E36 318IS, one from a E30 325i, or one from a six cylinder E36 like the M52 ZF or the M50 Jetreg S5D. Now this option really depends on how much power you're planning to make on your build. I've seen E30 transmissions handle up to 300 horsepower before, but I feel like that's really pushing it. If you're planning on making more than 300 horsepower, I would recommend going with the ZF or the M50 Getreg. With these transmissions from the E36s, you're going to need to fit the E30 center bearing to the rear section of the drive shaft, as well as these transmissions are a one-to-one -one final drive, so you're going to need to find a lower ratio diff. I would recommend something in the low threes. For my swap, I decided to use the factory transmission from my E30. I knew I wasn't going to be making much more than 200 horsepower, so I felt really comfortable with this choice. The other nice thing about doing this is you don't need to go and find another transmission, as well as you don't need to modify the drive shaft or swap out a differential. For flywheel, I'd recommend going with one from an M20. It's your lightest option, as well as it already came in your car, so it's the cheapest. You'll need to shave a little bit of material off the back of it, but you can just bring it to any sort of machining shop and they should be able to do it for you for pretty cheap. For clutches, it's pretty simple. It just needs to match the transmission. Make sure to put a good one in there. It's easier to replace it now than when everything's up and in the car. For your starter, it just needs to match the flywheel. So if you go with the M20 flywheel, use the M20 starter. If you're using M50 flywheel, use the M50 starter, no matter what transmission you choose. The M5X engines sit about 10 degrees flatter than the M20s, so you'll need a proper way to mount the transmission. You have a few options here. You can fabricate your own mount, use the mount that came with the transmission and just adjust it a little bit, or you can buy a pre-made one online. In my case, I just chose to go with a pre-made one online. It was about $80 and it just saved me the hassle of trying to make one and just made the swap process really smooth. For mounting the transmission in the car, because the engine is sitting at a bit of an angle, your shifter is going to sit at a bit of an angle too. 
So it's quite easy to fix. You just need to remove your shift linkage, put it in a vise, and bend it just a little bit. Put it back in the car, test fit it. For me, I took mine in and out quite a few times just to make sure that it was perfect. I would also recommend checking out a short shift kit. I spent the extra money on it and I haven't looked back. It just feels so much better over the stock shifter. And that's it for your engine and drivetrain. Next video, we'll be covering cooling for your M5X swap. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave a comment below or contact us on social media.